Hi everybody, Aaron from Solace here. Today I'm in North Vancouver, Canada, checking out some streams. Speaking of streams, do you use third-party database integration tooling to do changes to capture that publishes onto Kafka but you don't want to use Kafka? Well, have I got a tool for you. In today's video, we're going to look at a utility that proxies a Kafka connection directly onto your Solace event broker, so you can listen to those sweet data streams all across your event mesh. So, let's check it out. Okay, so this tool is open source and available on our GitHub's repo at Solace Labs, so github.com slash Solace Labs. Uh, just search for proxy, and it's right there. And uh, yeah, here's the code. There's a, there's a readme you can like check out and got some descriptions on how to build it, but I am going to just run through that myself right here. So let's go ahead and clone it. Now I have a uh, brand new EC2 instance here with uh, literally nothing on it, and so I'm just going to go ahead... I've installed Git and a few other, you know, Java and a few other things that I need. But um, yeah, we're going to use this. We're going to do it all right here. I'm going to use Gradle to build this thing. You can use uh, Maven as well. Uh, so whichever kind of flavor build tool that you want. That's going to go ahead and build it, package it up. Build distributions. Unzip that. Unzip. Spell it right. CD Kafka proxy. And uh, yeah, there's an example, a, uh, an example properties file here that you need. Uh, this specifies kind of the port that the proxy is going to bind to. I'm not going to be using uh, local host. I'm going to be using my EC2 instance, instance's uh, private IP address, which I have there. Um, you might need the advertised listeners. So if you're running uh, EC2, you know, the public IP address is different than the one that the server can actually see. So if you need to specify kind of what it's advertised as, uh, you might need to do that. This, you might also need this if you're running it in a container. Uh, TLS settings, if you're going to use that. The Solace broker that you're connecting into, either localhost or I'm going to be using one of the Solace public uh, message brokers here, VPN public. And down at the bottom is a list of separators that actually can do uh, Kafka topic separators to Solace topic separators conversion. So that's about it. Let's go ahead and run this thing. Uh, proxy examples. And there you go. It is now listening for incoming connections on that uh, IP address uh, waiting for uh, Kafka producers. So I have Kafka, kind of vanilla Kafka server uh, here on my local laptop. I'm not going to run the server, but I am going to use their console producer. So uh, I can actually, do I have it in my, yeah, I do have my clipboard. So let's take a look at this. So basically, where are you going to connect to? The Bootstrap server, the broker. So again, my proxy. The configuration, let's let's take a quick look at that, and the topic, which we're going to be publishing on. So uh, this example producers file is included with the is included with the proxy as well. So we're just going to do plain text, uh, username, password. This is what is passed by the proxy into Solace for your client username and password. So if you're running the you know your Docker container, Solace Docker container locally, this would probably be default default. Um, but yeah, SSL is supported uh, as well. So let's go ahead and just run this. And you should see the proxy here say, oh, we've got an incoming connection. Uh, I'm going to go off and connect to Solace. There it is. It's now connected to solacemessaging.com. And actually, this little window here is an SDK perf that I have running, also listening to the Solace broker and just echoing stuff that it sees. So if I publish a message down here, test, message test, that will proxy will publish a Solace message on topic test with the payload of test. That's not very interesting. Hello, world. How about that? Uh, and so, yeah, there it goes. It's publishing them as binary messages, fully persistent. You know, so if there's an HA failover or a network disconnection, you won't lose any data. Um, now, the topic is just getting mirrored through test, but like I said, we can do topic separators as well. So if I change this to flat uh, topic, now in Kafka, you can't subscribe to like wildcard portions of the topic because the topic is just as kind of a, a, a log file. It's a, it's a label. But um, in Solace world, you know, we do support multi-level topics. So if I publish on that, this should now change it to Solace Topics with a slash, so I could subscribe to test slash star slash topic if I wanted to. So we can do topic conversion. And one last thing, you know, we recently had partition queues come out as a feature. This is, uh, this is in April 2023. And so if your Kafka producer is also using uh, partitions, partition keys, uh, that actually will get passed through onto the Solace side as well. So here, Kafka, the console producer, you can tell it to use some keys. So I can say key one, and uh, this is my message. Hello, world, uh, 
partition. Partition, good spelling there. You'll see that on the Solus side, I now have this JMSX group ID being populated. That's what's used by the, the Solus broker to do the hashing for the partition. So if your Kafka producing application uses partitions, you can use Solus partitions uh, for kind of your um, non-exclusive but ordered uh, delivery as well. So yeah. There you go. So that's just really quick uh, how to get it up and running. Not very exciting though, so I thought I would do a GUI demonstration. Um, for this, I'm going to be using a, a tool called Airbyte. If you're not familiar with Airbyte, you can head over to airbyte.com. They do change data capture, data integration, data source integration from anything to from lots of things to lots of things. Check out all the different, these are all the source connectors that they have. Uh, you can see there's there's a lot of them. A lot of them are in beta. Uh, same with if I go back up and take a look at their destinations. They have a huge number of destinations. I'm going to be using the Kafka destination, obviously. There isn't a Solus destination yet. I'm actually coding it right now. Uh, but I did want to kind of use Airbyte to kind of show the uh, this, this functionality. So let's take a look at that Kafka destination configuration. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just, I have my bootstrap server there with my IP address for my EC2 instance. Uh, everything else is kind of default-ish. This is where I have my public public there. And uh, let's go ahead and just publish a test message. And it's going to publish a topic to airbyte.test, which will, of course, get converted into a Solus airbyte slash test over on this side. There's that incoming connection from airbyte. And there is my one message with some various airbyte metadata that you can then take a look at. So that's just one message. How about a stream of messages? That's what the one thing this is good for. I have a couple examples. One of them is their CSV source, uh, this kind of online epidemiology uh, setup. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I tried to get it running with um, Postgres and CDC and a bunch of stuff, but it was going to make this video way too long and uh, kind of complicated. But um, yeah, I can just set up a sync from data source to my proxy. There it goes. It's connected. And suddenly, all my streaming data is there available on my Solus event mesh, which I can now use topics. You can see it's a very detailed topic hierarchy, airbyte slash CSV slash US COVID. I can subscribe to parts of that, or I, I, I did some RSS integration. Lots of cool options. Um, this tool was actually originally, the proxy was originally written for Click Replicate. It was a Click Replicate use case, so you can definitely use that if you're a Click Replicate customer. Again, you set up a Kafka uh, target with just the kind of same kind of configuration there. It was battle tested against some pretty large data sets with Click Replicate. So I know that, you know, the performance wise, this thing uh, is, is pretty capable, but. Um, yeah, that is it. That is a quick uh, demo of the tool. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Again, it's on GitHub, Solus Labs. If you want to talk about it, come find me on solus.community. That's where I hang out to answer a lot of questions. Um, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, please do. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.